All right, we're up. Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to another Crystallized live stream. Uh, I'm here today with uh, Didrik and uh, Mr. Born. Uh, hello. Yeah, hey. hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got on top, but um, yeah, so welcome. Uh, today's live stream will be about content modeling, uh, and it's something like that we have not discussed much before uh, in the past uh, few live streams since we're mostly uh, showcasing either newest or the newest features of Crystallize or we're showcasing how to build a boilerplate, etc. So this and uh, the, the ones coming up next uh, of these live streams will be about uh, modeling. So it will be if you're interested or if you're new and you're uh, into these kinds of things or learn how you can model things out in Crystallize, be sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, follow us, of course, uh, with the new uh, live streams that are coming out. So today, uh, with Didrik uh, and Bort, we'll be showing the newest crystallized, uh, let's call it, design system in Figma. Didrik? Huh? Finally, finally some Figma instead yeah. of all that code. So this yeah. is going to be a good live stream. It's going to be the best live stream. <laughs> so let's do it. <laughs> dreams. Yes, finally. Yeah. So we'll go from uh, step zero all the way to designing uh, that in Figma, modeling out the shapes uh, in Crystallize um, together. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, but the first question would be, what is actually content modeling, uh, Mr. Board? What is that? And uh, we'll go on ahead later on to see. Yeah. So a content model is basically a visual well, in this case, it's a visual representation of the types of content you have to market and sell your product. So it could be a product page, it could be a video tutorial, or in this context, it could be a cooking recipe. You know, if you have a food store online and you want to sell groceries, um, you might want to market that with recipes, for example. We will use that uh, through this throughout this live stream. Um, and for us in an e-commerce context, it basically means that we are managing all information that is required to market and sell our products. And the goal with the content model is to allow for reuse, both you know, internally and if you think one web shop, but also uh, maybe across regions or across channels. So if you want to have an app or some in-store displays or uh, web shop, uh, you can reuse this and this is often referred to as a, you know content services or content hub where you have a central repository of in our case all products and marketing content uh, for your organization um, and since we're a SaaS vendor uh, you get this immediately online also so it's a direct service that you can um, hit uh, and use in production and the process for starting with content modeling is kind of to get an overview over what's my content universe. So what are the different types of information you're managing? And it could be what you use online, what you use in apps, what you use for you know, communicating with uh, your B2B um, uh, customers or partners. Uh, so uh, simple stuff from blog posts or how to's to of course products, product pages and uh, video tutorials. Um, Comics, of course, if you follow us, you notice that we do a comic every Friday. So that's a, a specific piece of uh, content that we model. And the process is basically you're looking for similar types of information. So if your products do the different structure or can you use kind of one shape to model all of your products? And is there, and uh, with the structure it's like, do they all have title, brief, uh, feature description, uh, pictures and that sort of thing. And then we have um, the process of identifying repeating uh, content. So in our example here, we will uh, make a recipe. Uh, also in a more usual case, it's maybe an author, uh, like an author for an article. Uh, you have uh, Twitter handles, you have a name, you have a profile picture. So instead of adding that to each and every article that uh, your consumers are going to create in Crystallize, you can have a relation to a new shape, which is author, like an article or a document shape. This is usually the process we're taking with the projects uh, and things we want to model in Crystallize. It's identifying, first of all, what we want to be showcasing. 
blog posts, articles, uh, product uh, information, you know, etc. And then start from after you get that uh, finalized, then you start building that. So it's again exactly what Mr. Board said: having and noticing, identifying this uh, reusability uh, between your content models. Yeah, and simply put, it's uh, the goal is to increase quality mm -hmm. and increase reusability of uh, product information, for example. And you basically save time um, uh, also by doing it properly. So that's uh, that's our goals. And we have developed a design system, or Didrik has developed a design <laughs> system <laughs> for modeling out uh, uh, information. Um, and maybe we can start with that, uh, starting with some modeling and, and showcasing how the design system works, how yeah. we Sigma for collaborative editing. I'll start out with sharing my screen. Yeah, give me one sec. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can we can see you. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, then we can start. Uh, so for those of you who doesn't know Figma, Figma is of course a prototyping tool uh, which you can design websites, uh, UIs, UI user experiences. Uh, in this case, we actually use uh, some of the nifty small tools inside of Figma to create a content modeling kit, basically. Um, if you have Figma, uh, you can find this content modeling kit on our webpage under crystallize learn on the best practices. Uh, here you have, you'll find a link into what is our Figma design kit. And this is what I am going to use now to create, like we talked about, a cooking recipe. Let me get some uh, font size here because that was pretty small. <laughs> and also what you can see here is I, uh, this is of course uh, just a Figma feature, but I, I just uh, logged into Figma and opened the, uh, the same diagram. As, so you can uh, see board as well. So now we can start uh, moving around on my stuff <laughs> whenever I do something wrong. But uh, like what said, we are going to create a cooking recipe, uh, which could be used for, let's say you have uh, a food store for which content to sell more of your products or your grocery stores. Um, to use this, we are of course going to start with a document, uh, which we are going to call a recipe, uh, which is going to contain like, um, let's say a video, uh, a summary of what this is, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, uh, relations to all our uh, ingredients. And by doing so, you can see here that on the left side here, under assets, I have something called shape items, which is the same as we have in Crystallize. Uh, we have a product, a folder, and a document. The last one is for another live stream, and we'll talk about that then. Uh, but for this, we are going to have a document. I'll zoom in here a bit, which we are going to call recipe. And a document is basically a, a structured piece of information uh, that you use for marketing purposes. It is. Um, and in this, uh, so let's say that this recipe is everything that we want to explain our recipe. Uh, everything that this recipe represents. Bad wording, but you understand what I mean. Uh, and what we need here is, of course, a summary. What is so beautiful about this, um, this recipe? And for that, we're going to use the component called rich text component. I don't know if I can zoom my UI. No, I can't. Uh, it's a rich text component. And a rich text component is um, well, exactly what it says. It's rich text. <laughs> you can have bold. You can have uh, unordered lists. You can have ordered lists, et cetera, et cetera. The thing that you expect from a text area or an input field. This rich text component, we're going to call a summary. So we can summarize what this recipe is all about. Let's, of course, add a picture, because this is going to be inspirational. People need to want to have this uh, recipe. And you can see here, what is beautiful about this uh, content modeling kit is that we can actually group things together. And I can also order things inside of here. And I'll show you how all of this makes sense soon. <laughs> First off, let's just add all the components that we want. And what I am essentially doing here is planning ahead 
what I am going to create and crystallize. So this is going to be a shape, a document shape called recipe that will contain these components. Uh, we also, of course, we do need directions because I'm not a great cook. And for that, we're going to use paragraph collection because then we can create a repeatable, um, what should we call it? A repeatable image, uh, rich text and title, for example. So we can create step one, step two, step three, et cetera. Uh, so let's call it directions like so. And the goal with this model is really to align the uh, communication between a developer, information architect, and maybe a, a business stakeholder so that everybody is talking about the same thing and what you actually end up implementing is what uh, you agreed on and designed. That's uh, the ultimate goal of this model. Definitely is. Um, so me, myself, I am doing this a lot whenever we are going to create something, for example, the crystallized web page. We model it out first to see what kind of content we are going to have for a new underlying page, basically. Um, but most essentially, or most importantly here, we of course need our relation components. And the relation components here is going to be an ingredient, for example, pepper, salt, tomatoes, etc. cetera. Uh, but what we, what we also- Maybe you can add an S there because I think it will have multiple true ingredients. That, that is true. Our recipe is more than one ingredient. Um, but what uh, our recipe also does have is a chef. Someone came up with this. So let's give them credits. And this is basically the same thing that I uh, talked about in the beginning. It's an author, but this is an author of this recipe, the creator. It can be multiple as well. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I have everything I need for this basic example of recipe in here. But uh, that doesn't mean that we are done because, OK, we have the basic component, but what is an ingredient? What uh, kind of feels does an ingredient shape have? Or a chef shape, for example. So to visualize this and to make it clear that, OK, yes, we have the base shape here that we are going to create a recipe with. Um, but to make it clear what an ingredient is, we are going to create a product. And like I talked about in the introduction, uh, let's say that this is a grocery store online. Uh, the reason why I'm using a product here instead of a document is that a product has some special abilities. What's uh, the right word? Some special, <laughs> well, it's basically a product. So you got price values and uh, stuff like this. <laughs> it's a product. It's a product. Thank you. That's why I use product because it's a product. Um, and inside of this product, uh, we can define, uh, like we always stress or always talk about, rich marketing content. What is so great about this product? So let's go back into our components um, library here. So, and let's use, uh, once again, our rich text component here. I'm sorry that it is, I guess it's a bit small for you guys. No, I think it looks OK. Yeah, no, I was just thinking on the left side here. Hmm. Oh, yeah, this uh, this one, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But I'm going to give it names here anyway and uh, like explain it. So this product is going to have a description. What's so great about this uh, pepper that we are going to sell or which is a uh, part of this ingredient? Uh, let's, of course, add a, a picture. <laughs> Well, it is a product, so it has a picture. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, true that. That's uh, one of the things that the products always have. That's, uh, one of, that's why it's a product. It's uh, it got some special properties that you don't have on a document. But what we do want to have is a nutrition table. So yeah, yeah that's important for us uh, gym people. <laughs> that is important for you, Savros. So you know how much fat and stuff you get in the in your body. You need to count your calories. Yes. <laughs> 
table, right? That's called the information instead. Mm -hmm. And of course, it could be things like uh, if it's vegan material or if it's organic or. That's a good point. Let's uh, let's add a component for it. Yeah. So. Is organic. Should we add is vegan as well? Yeah, do that. Yes, vegan. Mm -hmm. Like that. Okay. Now we do have our product. Well, let me <laughs> rename it. Our ingredient. Ingredient. Yep. Um, and of course, um, a relation can have multiple relations. It doesn't have to be one. So that means that we can have uh, multiple ingredients inside of this relation on the recipe, which again is what creates a recipe. It's different ingredients inside of one big bowl of uh, delicious stuff. <laughs> uh, um, the definition of cooking. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to show you my definition of cooking when we later on are going to create this inside of Crystallize and add content just to visualize it, visualize this even further. But as you can see now, we have a recipe, we have our ingredient uh, shape. What we are missing now is, of course, the chefs. So once again, let's add a document like this. Uh, let's call it a chef. One thing you have to do though, because it's uh, Figma, is to detach all of these components. Or, yeah, it's actually called components inside of Figma as well. Uh, detach it so you can add other components to it. And under Chef here, since it's not a product, we will add an image component like this. Picture. What else is it? Bio needs some information about. Uh... The chef. Why this chef is good? Mm -hmm. uh, bio. Um, Maybe a single line for his name. Yeah, <laughs> a name is also good. <laughs> we can just use we'll have it on top, but it could we be. can always use the top one. Um, yeah, that's true. Or maybe yeah. Uh, but uh, let's do maybe his own uh, his own personal page or the restaurant he's working. Oh, with. I know. Let's add a Twitter handle because uh, we add a lot of, just because we have a lot of uh, good recipes that we share on Twitter. Mm -hmm. All right. Of course, we can extend this to whatever needs we do have. But for now, let's keep the example simple. We have our recipe. We have our ingredient. And we also do have our chef. Um, so one way to visualize this and to show the correlations between different shapes here uh, is to go into our crystallized content modeling kit. Once again, go to arrows and just start adding arrows to the relations. So of course, the ingredients relation is going to have a relation to ingredient. Um, and chef's relation are going to have a relation to, you know what, I'm going to make it easier. This doesn't snap. So this is just something overlaying uh, the other frames here in Figma. But basically, here you do have it. Here you have um, how you could model or content model a recipe inside of Crystallize. Sounds good. Yeah, and this is basically the structure of if you're going to take your grocery store online, you can use this setup. You both have the capability to sell your products. Mm -hmm. So tomatoes and salt and water. And uh, you also have the capability to market this by adding, for example, recipes. And of course you can enrich the recipes adding some tutorial videos, for example. Yeah. So, uh, and this is uh, if you're selling, you know, uh, hardware like uh, you know lumber and sauce and uh, stuff to build the houses you could use the exact same pattern you could have how to tutorials and then uh, have a relation to all of the materials used in this uh, context so this is a, a good pattern for creating a content strategy for definitely yeah and this is um, like you said this 
the recipe is, uh, if you break it down, it's basically an article. The chef is basically an author and the ingredient is a product, like related product or talked about product in this article, for example. Mm -hmm. So I think this pattern is uh, reusable for a lot of different use cases that uh, we encounter, at least in the e-commerce space. Uh, but OK, so we do have the Figma design system here. But uh, now we want to translate this into crystallize, of course. Um, so let's try to do that as well. All right. So I do have my new fresh tenant here, which I have called Food Store. It's uh, all total blank. It's nothing in here. Um, so we are going to start from scratch. You can see that you have some default shapes already. This is what you start out with in Crystallize. You have the product, uh, the folder, and the article. But for now, we're going to create a new shape that we are going to call recipe. And the difference between what uh, Diederik just showed in Figma, this is the typical the first phase of the project, where you have uh, a model that serves as documentation and communication before you start any coding or you know start any actual modeling, and it's much quicker to make mis or better to make mistakes on the modeling stage than once you've uh, started to implement it. So now you're defining the shapes or shaping, as the <laughs> coined a few days back uh, in Christmas. Yeah, I'm basically shaping my tenant. I'm getting my tenant in shape. Oh, we can do this for days. <laughs> Uh, but like Bubur said, it's easier for me to move things around in here uh, than after the developers have actually started to implement uh, and also my structure. You can switch back to the Figma tenant and just show uh, if you want to comment something. Because yeah. it, uh, typically you want to you know, explain a field or a relation or hmm. you know, describe your diagram. So yeah. I think you have a component for that also if you want to add that to the recipe. I see, I see where we're going. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do have uh, information dialogue as well, or like an error if there, if there's something wrong here, or a warning. That's something we need to think about. <laughs> so this is uh, basically version one of our Figma content modeling kit. Uh, if there's anyone who will start using it and have some feedback, please tell us. We can talk about it and see if it's an improvement and something that belongs in here. Uh, but yeah, try it out. Um, but yeah, back to crystallize. Um, so what we are going to do now is to model out what we all actually do have in Figma. Uh, and as you can see, the recipe, let's add summary or a rich text, image, paragraph collection, relation, and relation. So I'm just going to do this real quick in here. And the way you do it, you click it here, summary. Um, what else did I say? An image, picture, directions. You see how quickly I forget. Yeah. <laughs> and our relations, ingredients, and chefs. Recipe, summary, picture, directions, ingredient, and shapes, document, create. Here we go. Actually quicker than in Figma. Well, it was. <laughs> it actually was. <laughs> but that's because I planned ahead. <laughs> but it's easier to do the interactions there than it is. Uh, OK, so you can see that, that we do have our recipe shape. Let's add our chef shape. Single chef, it's a document again. We want to show off our faces, picture. Uh, is that what I called it? Yes, yeah. it was. Bio, bio and, and Twitter and handle. Yeah. Let's be consistent. Bio and single line for Twitter handle. I think that's it. We have our shape name, chef, picture, bio, Twitter handle, and it's document like this. And of course, last but not least, let's add a product, ingredient. And here we have 
uh, description. We have not a picture, that's what we talked about, <laughs> but we have a properties table. Nutrition information. That um, and there's a typo there, but uh... oh, is it? Is it Rianic is vegan? The tratium. <laughs> Yeah. Still, still a typo. Still a typo. <laughs> let's, let's, let's for. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to get a brain fart. <laughs> Move the A and you're good. <laughs> like this. Good. Okay, good, good, good. Typing in Auschwitz. Typing in Auschwitz. That was doing so good. It's vegan. So yeah. Now we have our ingredient, it's a description, nutrition information, is organic and is vegan. We might forgot for, did I talk about switch? <laughs> it's basically a Boolean or yes or no. Product, ingredient, create. Here we go. Uh, we are going to use the generic folder that is already inside of Crystallize to, yeah, to organize our content. But the article and the product uh, shapes you can just remove from this setup here because they have no I can. purpose. And what you did now, Didrik, uh, by defining the shape, this is typically a role that an information architect or a developer does. This is not something you know editorial users uh, should uh, should be working with. No, in this Even case, it's a designer. <laughs> Figma developer. Figma developer. <laughs> Call it whatever you want. <laughs> all right, uh, that's very well said. Um, okay, we have created all our shapes. Uh, so now we are going to create our structure inside of uh, Crystallize and organize our content and populate our content, actually. Mm -hmm. So what we are going to start with, and that is, uh, let's create a chef, maybe? Maybe we create a uh, yeah, folder for chefs. Yeah, it's a folder for chefs. Uh, yeah, and um, chefs. So this is, uh, once again, this is a rich text field, uh, which is a brief, and uh, we have a paragraph collection as a body. So this is, if you want to have an introduction to all the chefs uh, on this folder. It's a container, a folder in Crystallize is like a normal folder you can put on your stuff below it, but you can also yeah. customize the shape of a folder if you have specific needs there. Thank you. You know what? I'm going to create all my folders first. Because we have store? chefs. Hmm? The store where you put all your products. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because uh, one thing is to have all our recipes, uh, but another thing is to actually just display all our products. So mm -hmm. then you usually have a store mm -hmm. or shop. Let's call it store. It's a web store. <laughs> it's a web store. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to try to create be creative with the text here now, so we're going to publish it without any text. Uh, but there we have it. We have a store, we have chefs, and then, of course, we want to have a folder. Should we call it recipes or should we call it inspiration? Recipes. Recipes. Like this. And I'm going to click publish. All right. So here we have it. Here I have a small organization of uh, all my content. And of course, this is where I'm going to add my folders or products or recipes or chefs. So let's start out with, I'm only going to start from the bottom up. So I'm going to start with the ingredients uh, and add the chefs. And then at the end, we are going to create the recipe using all of that all together, the grand review. So let's see, let's start with chefs. Um, I'm going to create a new one, a new chef, a document. Here you can see, here I choose the shape. It's either a recipe or a chef. And board pasta is one of our chefs, of course. And here you can see all the input fields or components that we have already created in the shape. It's the picture, the bio, and the Twitter handle. Um, what we, of course, do need is a beautiful image. And since we now have our beautiful illustrations, I am going to use this. Um, 
Four is the boss. Twitter handle is, I don't know. At Bard Farstad. Bard Farstad. Follow him if you want to. Uh, and we're going to publish. So now we have one of our chefs. Since I am the one talking, I want to be a chef as well. And you, Starus, you can add yourself. <laughs> <laughs> He's a designer. You also do code sometimes. Times. Live. <laughs> uh, here, the Segna. I have a lot of followers, almost 30, so follow me and get those my numbers up. <laughs> Okay, so now here we have our chefs, uh, which we are going to relate to uh, when we create our final recipe. But to create a recipe, we do, of course, need some products. And here we have spaghetti already. Yeah, sorry, I and said that's because <laughs> someone cheated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you all know now, um, a lot of people can, uh, or you can invite people to your tenant. So I've invited both Staros and Board to my to my food store tenant in Christa's. Uh, so now board was able to create spaghetti. That means that uh, I guess in the end we are going to create a recipe for spaghetti. <laughs> but uh, other than that, what we do we need for spaghetti? I'm going to create salt now board. Oh, I thought you were going to do water because I just did salt. Oh, true. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to do water. <laughs> and it's not even called water, it's cold. Uh, fresh, fresh Norwegian spring water, <laughs> because spring is spring. Starbucks, you won't get it. <laughs> yeah, you see, I'm actually creating the wrong thing now. I'm going to create that product. Here, ingredient, fresh Norwegian spring water, which is beautiful. Uh, in Norway, the price for water is zero, which is good. Let's add some image. Here we have a beautiful water image. Like this. It's your FKU also. Yeah. It's a food store, store water, fresh spring. <laughs> okay. okay. Good. Good, uh, let's add some content to it. Of course, yeah, I've created some content. We have some content ready. Or I can also say uh, I'm going to do this on the fly. But add some summary. Let's explain what water is and why it's good for you. Here you can see it, I copy it like this. Uh, Nutritional information about Nutritional. water? <laughs> This is important for Stavros when he's uh, cooking, right? Yes, this is the most important part for... And you can see that the uh, nutrition uh, or a table, a uh, property table actually works like a paragraph collection that you can add multiple tables even if you just have one component. That's because uh, if you are selling a good example, electronics maybe, mm -hmm. Uh, you want to have, uh, uh, let's call it weights or dimensions for the package, uh, but you also want one property table for specifications on this TV. So that's why you can add multiple tables to one component. And I am going to name it. Um, once again, let's try to spell it right this time. Let's uh, add some nutritions. I have it here, of course. It's calories, fat, sodium. Always do protein and carbs. <laughs> Which one is the most important, uh, Carbohydrate. Cyrus? Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, okay. Correct. What about fiber and sugar? And, and do protein. That's the most. Uh, yeah. We are going wild here. Sugar. 
<laughs> protein. <laughs> protein. Mm. Here we go. So I guess it's zero. <laughs> zero. Oh, 1.5. Zero. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here you have your water. Can you drink water, Cyrus? Uh, yep. I guess it's organic. <laughs> yeah, it is. That and is. it is vegan. That's correct. Good. <laughs> All right. So I do think we have our ingredient now. We have our fresh Norwegian spring water with an image. We have the full price, which is zero. Stock. Unlimited. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's do an information. So let's publish it. So now, um, yeah, everything we need to create. Have you added all the other information here, Bart? Yep. So now you can just start with your recipe. Finally, finally. <laughs> so here I am going to create my recipe, which is. Spaghetti. <laughs> and boiled water. <laughs> like that. That's uh, the most common uh, <laughs> meal ever. All the Italians are screaming. Spaghetti and cheese. Uh, it's going to be boiled water because I haven't <laughs> added an ingredient for cheese. Yeah, so it's going to be spaghetti and boiled water. Yeah, premium version is with uh, cheese. <laughs> uh, so here, let's add a summary. Uh, of course, we need to add some images to our perfect spaghetti ball, which is going to be this one. Here we go. Very inspirational. Today. Inspirational. In speed rate journal spaghetti ball. Always remember the alternative text to images. And then, of course, like we talked about, directions to actually creating uh, a bowl of spaghetti with boiling water. Um, I want to model this that we have our directions, which is a paragraph correction, which is uh, a repeater. So here I can add as a title, step one. Let's add what step is as well. Boil water. Like that. We'll add the description. How to start <laughs> boiling water. Well, basically, this is add water. <laughs> and boil. <laughs> step two. Let's see. Add salt. And here you see, already we have a need for ingredients. Yeah, you already have two ingredients. You have water and you have salt. I do, I do. <laughs> I forgot I created fresh uh, Norwegian spring water. Step three, add spaghetti. <laughs> I haven't read the description before now. Remove plastic pack package. <laughs> so it's not only content modeling, this is uh, rich content. We have actually created the rich content for this. Wait for six minutes. Description, just wait. Step five. Drain of water. <laughs> okay. It's only six steps. No spoiler. <laughs> Pour water. And the last one is oh, the best one. Adding butter. <laughs> Let's add step oh. six. You know, in Greece, we do olive oil. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. So, in Norway, we do, we do butter. The same. <laughs> we do it the French way with butter. No. Yes. The three uh, okay. important ingredients in French cooking, you know what it is? Butter? Butter, butter, butter and butter, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I like French cooking. Okay, so now we do have our steps. And uh, the next one is the um, relation components. And here we can have our ingredients. So let's go back into our store. And here you can see we have cheated. So board has created some more 
uh, products while I've been talking. Let's add, add our fresh Norwegian spring water. Let's add our butter, our salt, and spaghetti, of course. I haven't published it. Um, and then we have, of course, the creators of this beautiful recipe, which is uh, me and board. So the chefs, this board, and it's me. And there we have it. And you can see it also does persist because I published it, everything I want to say. And here we then get the images. So this is how you can create from modeling it in Figma to creating the shapes and model your content in Crystallize to actually adding content to your shapes. So now we have our first proper recipe, which is spaghetti and boiled water. Bon appetit, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So yeah, this is like the process when we showcase the, the, the latest water plate. Uh, the content, the rich content, but a plate. This is how you can start from. Okay, this is how we're going to do blog posts, design that in Figma, maybe, I don't know, go through with your information architects and business people, et cetera, et cetera, model that in, in Crystallize. Uh, and then, boom, you can showcase beautiful content. Well, not a spaghetti with water recipe, but, uh, you know, uh, a, a better one, perhaps um showcase that and also view the products uh showcase the products in the end result as well and, and also what you can show david is that uh, if you do the graphql button there this is already available now as a content service so that you can fetch all of your recipes ingredients you can build your storefront you can have your app uh, and uh, reuse this across any any channel Yes. So, uh, and, and you already have the relations here, as we saw with the chef and ingredients. So you can mm -hmm. also see if you go on the, on the ingredients, you can get a list of the recipes that this uh, ingredient is featured in. And also uh, with the chef, so you can see, okay, did they have made these recipes, for example? Yes, exactly. And it's fast. It is fast. Six milliseconds to, to get all this content. And here we also have, uh, we said it before, but we have, uh, uh, oh, now I've compressed all the images as well, um, and also transformed it into web piece instead of just serving JPEGs. So you can add a proper source set, and it's of course different sizes, mm -hmm. which is good for your SEO. Yes, and performance. The core web vitals. Core web vitals, as always. <laughs> I think that's it. That's what I had to talk about at least. Uh, like I said. Uh, Try it out, the Figma modeling kit, and come back with some feedback if you have any. That's very nice. Uh, thank you, Didrik. Uh, no problem. Pretty cool, pretty cool one. And uh, like we said in the beginning, this is not the last, let's say, uh, thing you're going to see from Crystallize when it comes to modeling, uh, content modeling. So there will be more of that in the next live stream since Crystallize is built to of course, do that exact uh, process, right? Go through that process, building out beautiful information architecture and pushing that out. Um, so yeah, we're going to be having uh, many of these in the future. So be sure to subscribe and of course, uh, follow for the latest uh, updates when it comes to what we're going to be showing up next. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. And yeah, if there's anything, feel free to reach out in the, of course, in the uh, Slack uh, community channel.